Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 108, A Sign of the Times, recorded on August 21st, 2020 from Zanata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt. And let's get right on into the news. Well, we'll start with the Zoho Marketplace. They now have passed over 1,000 extensions uh, inside the, uh, the Marketplace, and it's just been growing and growing. We talk about it every week. Uh, you know, you're seeing more and more point solutions, more and more vendors creating their own solutions. It's, uh, it's fantastic, and it's becoming a great resource for a lot of various integrations. And ever since they released, you know, Sigma and Catalyst and made the development and deployment of these so much easier. I mean, we're even seeing, you know, companies and partners that are making extension development a core piece of their business model. So you're really seeing a big uh, renaissance of these being released just because it's so much easier to do it now. Um, You know, it'd be interesting to see uh, kind of extensions deployed over time charted out because it'd be cool to see how much how many more have come out and what the rate is of release following, you know, some of those developer tools going live. Yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, developers can make money. I don't think Zoho takes anything in their marketplace. So it is a Zoho billing. So when you do it, you get billed from Zoho every month. If you're, if you know, if an extension is $10 a month, and I believe they pass that hundred percent back to the developer. Um, you know, so unlike a lot of things that are going on with Fortnite and Apple right now and all the little lawsuits <laughs> out there. Uh, so, you know, there is some money in there. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I think that a lot of uh, developers are not kind of doing it for that. I think they're just doing it to drive recognition and to build these solutions. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's good stuff. And this is a good article too. It's interesting how they broke these down. They broke them down by that there's an extension for every stage of the customer life cycle. And then it looks like they've created kind of these cool little logo linism brushstroke icons for, you know, reach, acquisition, conversion, retention, and loyalty. And they talk about, you know, the different solutions that basically are around each one of these various type of point things that you need for the overall customer life cycle. And there's just a lot there. And it seems like, you know, oftentimes I'm just talking to clients and, you know, they're saying, boy, is there any way we can integrate this? And used to be, you'd be no, and you'd look in the app, the app store or the marketplace and there was nothing there. Now, now you got a good chance of finding something. And most of the time they're pretty good. Yeah, it's just awesome to see. Yeah, it really is. All righty. And then uh, Zoho Meeting keeps uh, having uh, improvements made to it. So they've improved some host controls as well as some performance controls, a whole bunch of, uh, of, of things here. Uh, actually was on a call with someone from Zoho the other day who was chastising me about using Zoom. <laughs> um, and I'm told that basically they have fixed everything. I said, well, the one thing I would want to carry about was recordings. And I guess the recordings still aren't, aren't up to par. So um, they, they admitted that. So that's interesting. But I have been on a couple calls and there have been all the audio and all the video issues seem to be gone. So I think that they've handled that. Yeah, and I think we've talked about it a couple of times, but they have just been loading on additional... Um, additional servers to kind of support some of these applications, this and Showtime specifically. Yeah. Um, so I think they've seen an insane increase in usage and they're, you know, kind of patching things and improving the performance as they go. Yeah, just kind of a nice set of, you know, control and UI and kind of functionality updates here rolling out across the board. I mean, this is not minor. There's just a whole bunch here, you know, chat transcripts, you can filter participants. I mean, I think a lot of things that we're kind of used to, but um it seems like the, you know, the, the the escalation of development of this product over the last five or six months, it's, you know, they're really starting to get it to best in class. Now, if they fix recordings, man, are we golden. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing right there. You know, and there's a lot that goes into recordings too, because most of the major services now, they don't just give you a recording of, you know, just one recording. Like I'm in mean, Zoom, we get four different recordings. We get just the screen, just the video, you get video and screen, you know, you get all these different options you can look at and you get your own discrete audio track because they know that people are going to want to do a lot of editing with this kind of stuff. So um, shout out to the team. You guys are doing great work. Now go take a look at how Zoom handles recordings and uh, get, let's get that going. Get some nice 1080p quality recordings out of here. And I think, uh, I think meeting is going to be completely and totally ready for prime time. Absolutely. All right, and then Backstage has a, a, sad, a great update, but a sad one. They have now automated the ability to cancel your event, <laughs> which uh, 
it's three simple steps. Uh, and they even, they even admitted, you know, be, uh, due to COVID-19, a lot of events have to be canceled now. Um, and, you know, it used to be the, there was a whole bunch of different steps. Uh, and now they've kind of nailed it, you know, three simple steps, one by one to, uh, to go ahead and shut down the event and put out the notifications and all of those kind of things. So um, it's, uh, it's good. It's good. They handle refunds, everything. Yeah, it kind of handles it in three different pieces. First is updating the microsite or kind of the landing page for signing up and managing the event from the client side. Then they automate notifying all the different participants who may have registered and then processing any refunds if you are selling paid tickets. Um, Tammy definitely makes it easier. Unfortunately, it's a you know kind of harsh reality of the times right now. Hopefully you're canceling so that you can reschedule for a digital event. But you know, either way, it just is nice to not have to labor over um, the actual process of canceling one of these events. Yeah, and remember, we talked about this either last week or a few weeks ago. Backstage now supports virtual events, so you know maybe they can cancel, just switch the entire thing to a virtual event, and they've they've done some stuff around that as well. So, anyway, backstage is right up there with Eventbrite, man. It got there really quick to another one of those applications that they just did great, great development from uh, from that team. All right, this one you got to explain to me, Tyler. So. API metered credit usage changes. Uh, this has something to do with sub-concurrency and concurrency for complex API. So what does it all mean? So, so basically the, the way that um, you know, the API is structured, and this is pretty commonplace across any different application, is you know, when you make a call, it consumes a credit. And you know, that credit is kind of supposed to correlate to the intensity on Zoho's end to run whatever function or update you're calling in your API. Um, you know, and there's kind of two different types of calls that you could make, um, or, you know, there's more than two different types, but they're grouping them into two, which is kind of simpler or more complex calls. So when you're making these different API calls, you have to worry a little bit about concurrency, right? Just meaning, you know, how many of this action can I do at one time? So for example, if our two different actions are updating a record or converting a lead, um, basically what they're saying here is that you could have a different concurrency limit based on the action that you're taking. So more intensive actions like converting a lead are going to have lower concurrency limits. So maybe you can only run 10 at a time versus, you know, updating a record, you're likely able to do much more than 10, you know, more 25 or 50 at a time. So it does just kind of depend on exactly what you're doing. They've kind of tweaked these limits around over time. So there's older limits that were a little lower and they've bumped a lot of those up to 10. Um, but it basically so is just them breaking down the types of actions and that some of them might be limited a little lower if you're running them concurrently. But now it, didn't, it used to matter what edition you were running and now it's the same for all editions. Is that what yep. I'm getting? And they've bumped up the limit a little for the complex APIs up to 10. Rather than a couple of them were more at like, you know, six, eight, or five. Got so it. So all those kind of across the board are 10. Nice. Nice. So uh, a nice update then. All right. And then Zoho Workerly got an update. This is uh, really nice, actually. This Workerly app, this is for your temporary kind of 1099 non-employees that you're staffing and they now have included day rates. Uh, so you not only can manage on this, but you can just calculate people, you know, you have a half day rate or a full day rate and they've kind of dropped that in. And it's interesting because I actually was just talking to someone the other day that was asking about this and asked about day rates because they've got <laughs> employees and they're hiring them and they're bringing them in on a day rate basis. Uh, so some pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff here. And, um, you know, what can you say? They do, they continue to make improvements to it. We actually have not deployed Workerly for a single client yet. Um, but, uh, I, I imagine that the day is coming soon. <laughs> yeah, and that's definitely nice. I mean, you could always work around this by having them log specific amounts of hours, you know, like a four hour, or five, you know, eight hour shift to mark a half day or a full day, but just being able to have the default functionality is just much nicer to work with. Yep. All righty. And then on mobile app news, uh, we now have global search functionality for Zoho Bug Tracker for Android and Zoho Projects for Android. Uh, 
the, the difference between projects and bug trackers virtually this really the same applications so nest bug tracker nested inside projects as it were anyway um, so you can now do global search which you could not do before so they've got a nice little search button you can filter and go through so that's uh, that's it and same exact the same exact functionality for projects as well so and definitely nice rather than having a search within a specific module or a specific project you can kind of just search across the board with a couple different filters or parameters yeah absolutely nice little quality of life update completely completely it is <clears throat> all right and then that brings us to the implementation of the week so we kind of talked about this one a little bit offline uh this is a really interesting use case yeah so basically you know one of the things that we bump into with clients often is that they might want to allow one of their sales team or someone who's working in the crm to send some type of fixed notification out while they're working on a specific record and it might need to go out multiple times throughout the life cycle of that record um, but it's kind of up to the sales rep to determine when when that uh, notification should go out. And so you could set these up using CRM workflows, right? So you could say like, hey, every time that you check or uncheck this little you know, checkbox field, this notification is gonna go out. Um, but what we found is from a user perspective, it's not very intuitive to just say like, hey, any update to this field, no matter what you do, sends this email, it just feels a little bit odd. So what we do to kind of get around that is implement custom buttons. So when you're working inside the CRM, either from a list view or from like a record view page, you can actually add in a little button in the top right that'll do a pre-programmed action. Um, so on our end, what we can do is actually set up a little deluge function inside of that button that once you click it, it basically gathers information about the deal or whatever record we're working with. You know, maybe the name, you know, the dollar amount assigned, expected closing date, you know, some of these key parameters. And it gets them all formatted and then post them over to Zoho Flow as a webhook. And then Zoho Flow has a little tool just built directly inside of Flow where you can send out emails to a fixed email address. Um, you know, so we can basically take that data from the deal, get it formatted into a email template and then shoot it out to whoever needs to receive it. Um, so like an example use case for this might be if you're working you know, on a deal or on a specific transaction and you want to ping out a request maybe to your shipping department or logistics department to get a quote for shipping, right? So maybe inside the deal, you have the required delivery date, you have some of the information about the package, maybe some dimensions or weight values, and you can just click this button and it'll ping all that information to shipping. They can get you a quote and respond. And so using these, you can even include like CCs on the emails and some logic around it. So it's a pretty slick little tool where you can basically just toss this data from the CRM over into Flow and then use its email functionality to, to send this information out. Yeah, that's good. And you know, we were kind of talking about that whole, you could do this with workflows and you could do this inside the CRM by having like some sort of toggle, but mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it's hard to train people on that. Yeah, unclick it, click it, click it, unclick it, right? The buttons are- Just feels weird much, to use sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I wish they'd do something with buttons, like a little better organization placement. It'd be nice if you could actually make them real buttons rather than just kind of the drop down menu that they are. You know? Yeah, it'd be it'd be really nice to have like a button in line with like a section header or something yes. like that, kind of more on the page. Because these buttons, they live up in the top right. And you right. basically get a drop down of all your different buttons that you could press. And, and that gets the job done, right? I mean, you can train to look up there, but it would just be super slick if you could just embed them in like a section or in a certain part of the page. Well, it'll probably be in begin in a couple of weeks and you know, <laughs> sure. we'll see it there. We'll see it there. Hey, and also when the Zoho Flow icon got modernized. It That's... did. So they finally kind of released that out and rolled it out. I don't know if it's actually updated in the application. I used it here because I think it looks really slick. Where'd you find it? I found it on their branding guide. So it's definitely okay. in the it's in the pipeline, but I don't know if it's actually been updated in the Flow application yet. I don't think it yeah, has. It's funny because there's um there's like just a few of those, right? That are that are Stragglers. left here. So you got calendar is kind of hanging out. Contact manager, I don't know if they're gonna deprecate docs, which is kind of being deprecated. See, you found it on the branding guide, but it's still the old. I must version have found here. it somewhere else then. Yeah, I haven't Where noticed. Where did I pull that, that logo from? 
Yeah, it's it's kind of you know forms. I mean, that there are a couple of these that it's kind of crazy. You know, and I think we've seen a lot of them too. Yeah, they, you know, well, like you we've, found we've it seen them. Right? We've seen them in like other posts or other images. Yeah, and we're kind of just waiting on some of those updates. Just a few stragglers at this point now. You know, most of them have been rolled over, and and they look great with this new design. And you know, the fact that they're all consistent is is awesome. But they really do. A couple stragglers I mean, so far. Just a few, but we're almost there. I think by 2025 they'll have them all <laughs> updated, and <laughs> we away we'll go. All righty, let's move on to our reads of the week. Um, Start off with, uh, well, let's start with our second article here. So uh, I threw in this article because it's another interview with uh, Sridhar Vimbu. He is the CEO of Zoho, if you don't know. And he basically left Pleasanton, California and moved to a small village um, in India, not far from their corporate headquarters there in Chennai. Or the, um, and this is a nice little interview, kind of talking about everything he's been doing and what his philosophy is. And uh, it's by a uh, Chandra, Chandra Shrikanth. Sorry, Chandra, if I messed that up. But uh, it's just a quick little interview. It talks about his life in the village and what he's doing here and the, you know, some mistakes he's learned and what they're doing and what, you know, what they're doing with their Wi-Fi and all, all kinds of different things, but it's just a short little read, but if you want to keep up and I, every now and then I put these in here, it's good to see what he's doing. Uh, I was planning on getting out there at, you know, end of the year early. Cause I guess the time to go to Chennai is like January, February kind of thing. So mm-hmm. who knows if we'll make it out there or not, but, uh, but good stuff. Nice little read. And then a more traditional for kind of what we talk about here is uh, HubSpot kind of did it again. This is their ultimate guide to managing remote marketing teams. You know, always timely. Uh, This is a 17-minute read. It's by Pamela Bump. And man, you know, yet again, uh, HubSpot, they, they I don't know how they find uh, they must just pay exceptionally well for these bloggers because all these pieces they're just so well researched and so well done yeah. these long there's a blogs. lot of you just see a lot of blogs that are just clearly for seo kind of puff pieces right you know without a lot of useful information that are you know 15 pages long and they don't say anything but you know hubspot just puts out high quality stuff you know week after week makes our lives easy for finding it, these uh weekly it reviews. does and i try to find other things but the funny thing is is that Look, they're tackling the problems that, that businesses are facing today, and they're tackling them in a very, very good way. And even though they're a CRM, they are pretty generic. Uh, you know, yeah, they pimp their products a little bit, but for the most part, you know, they're talking about you know all the other products and best best ways to do it. But this is a very good you know step by step guide. Um, I don't know how one, two, how many different processes three four five six seven it's a lot (laughs) (laughs) and ten goes on basically you know ten steps for kind of driving all this through so good i i I cannot uh can't recommend it uh any more than i always do but you know if you uh are having trouble managing your teams remotely i check this out and i think it's uh interesting kind of calls into play some of the tools that you might want to use some of the habits you might want to build so it kind of touches on a lot of different aspects of you know kind of making this transition to having so many people remote because with marketing now i mean a lot of this the work can be done from anyone's computer i mean most of this stuff is all running in cloud software but the human processes and the management while people are you know out and about is where it can become a little more challenging yep and, you know, to this, by the way, we are going to be doing our webinar on Click next Tuesday. And so if you go to the website right there, you'll see register for the webinar. You want to catch that because so much of Click is all about managing remote teams and dealing with that. And so you will not want to miss that. I think you'll find it. Uh, I think you'll find it valuable. And then over on Zanata. Uh, we've got an article on building live dashboards in Zoho Creator and a kind of a step-by-step guide. Uh, 
Uh, so you will want to check that out if you're kind of curious on how to build some live dashboards. Additionally, we've got two more resources that we found <laughs> uh, scourging around here. We've got uh, basically relating data with lookup fields. So again, this is a Zoho Creator uh, tutorial. And then we've got uh, segmenting your customers in Zoho CRM. And you know, these, these again, they're just nice little PDF guides. And if you know, if you'd rather, if you'd rather have something you can print out or look at and read, uh, these are great, great resources and they're all organized in our resources guide where you can kind of go through and, you know, whatever you're looking for, kind of just go into it and it'll, all the resources we've collected over time will be there. Oh, and sometimes there's a nice little video of Tyler and I talking, kind of doing a nice little introduction, um, but we break them all down. So we break them down by guides, by articles, and by videos. Um, so check it out. I think you will find it to be of value. All right. And that brings us to our application of the week. Uh, I like this one. So this, I found this in the Chrome marketplace, but it's kind of for everything. It is an application called uh, the LinkedIn email finder by adapt prospector. Um, so <laughs> If you uh, go to the Adapt Prospector website, basically what this does is a Chrome extension. And when you're inside LinkedIn, it uh, allows you to click the Chrome extension and it pulls up that information on the person and it will give you their email address. And if you pay $49 a month, it'll also give you some of their direct dial numbers, uh, all sorts of kind of list management. It can go into sales navigator. You can do a CSV export. Um, but interesting, the one, uh, if you're watching the show on YouTube, you know, I did it on myself and it got one of my Zanata email addresses, not my primary, so it, it, but it would have worked. I tested it on probably six or seven other people. It got them all. The email addresses were all the same exact ones that I had inside of, uh, inside my, inside the CRM. So, you know, pretty good. Um, not sure, you know, it's $149 a month for three users up to 2000 contacts a month. And <clears throat> that one gives you the CRM integration with Zoho. So that's, uh, kind of cool. So Salesforce, Zoho, Pipedrive, HubSpot, and Outreach are supported. And that'll actually write everything back to the CRM. Um, pretty, pretty nifty. I haven't paid the $149 to try it out. Uh, but the free version, I think maybe gives you like a hundred lookups a month. It doesn't give you phone numbers. It doesn't give you anything. It just gives you a hundred of these lookups. Um, so if you want to just get an email that way, you can play around with it the, with the with the free version for a while. But you know, you compare this with Link Match, which is only nine ninety nine a month, uh, which does pull everything outside of LinkedIn and put it in, and you know, it's kind of a winning combination. You know, it's just so powerful. Any of these tools that you can layer on for prospecting on LinkedIn, you know, it's just growing and growing as kind of one of the primary ways, especially if you're doing you know business to business sales that able to get in touch with qualified prospects and, you know, get in, get in contact with them. Yeah. So we've got all the links in the show notes and, you know, if, if you're doing a lot of prospecting and digging in, I mean, that's the missing thing when, you know, you're zipping around inside LinkedIn and you find the proper person, you cannot get their email. Um, you know, so this is, this is trying to solve that problem. And there are a lot of tools out there that are trying to do that as well, but um give this one a shot. I think you might find it uh, worthwhile. So shout out to the guys over at Adapt Prospector. Um, not sure about the name of your company, but hey, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then our tip and trick of the week. This is also our, one of our YouTube videos of the week. Last week, we talked about profiles. And so this week, we've kind of gone into the next step in profiles, which is roles and data sharing and how you set those things up and what you can do around there. Um, and it, it's worth watching. I mean, Tyler, we talked about it last week, but this is kind of CRM basic fundamentals, right? Set up those profiles and then set up your roles and data sharing. Yep. And so, you know, again, kind of last week talking about what those profiles allow you to do versus these roles are going to set up what people can see kind of across the CRM. We talk a little bit about the hierarchy that's built into these as well, you know, so that if someone's a sales manager and they have a sales person under them, right, there's kind of a roll up that happens in the types of records you can see. So definitely worth taking a look at. 
this type of thing is pretty quick and painless to set up in your own CRM. And I think the video is a good jump off point. Yeah, it's, it's so important too. And, you know, a lot of organizations, they only want people to see leads they own or leads that are specifically shared with them. And so when you're building up these overall roles, you can say, you know, for the example we have here, you can say, I've got developers and maybe you want the developers to only see the records that they're actually working on. And at that developer level, you also have the choice of saying, okay, anybody that's a developer can see every other developer's record or they can't. And, you know, you can segment it that way and you build this overall structure. And then you can get down to the record level as to what's shared freely, what's not shared freely on the data, the data sharing side. So, you know, um, quick little video we're taking a look at, especially if you're just getting started with setting up your CRM. All right, Tyler. Well, that is a wrap. Uh, if you've got any questions for us or comments, please send us an email over at info at Zanata.com or go to the website and click on drop us a line. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to the stories we discussed today. You can also follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.